Let me show you another example where I'm using Cypress Recurse plugin to do something where we don't know how many actions we have to take until we find the element we want to click. So I have this setup where I have a couple of sections and if I click on each section, it expands a panel. And then one of the panels has a button. And if I click on the button, it pops an alert. Can I test this? Writing a test is complicated because I don't know which section contains this button. Imagine it's created dynamically when we click on the accordion and the panel expands. So I have to click each panel one by one and if I see the button, I should stop and click on the button and confirm the alert was called. So let's do this. The first thing I want to do, I want to confirm that I actually have accordions right here. So we have class accordion and site get accordion returns me five. If there were no accordion classes on the page, it would fail. So this confirms that I do have some elements to click. Now here's where I will use the recurse function. And the first argument is something that does an action. So in this case, my action is to click on the accordion button. So I will get the accordion. Now we have a problem. You don't want just to get all of them or get just the first one. We want to get the current. We want to iterate all of them. That's why we need an extra variable just to know which accordion we want to click. So we get all accordions. We're going to get the current one and we are going to click on it. Now it will open, you know, let's say just like this one or like that one. And what we want to do next, we want to return the button. So we're going to get the panel that's visible, right? becomes visible. And inside we'll try to find a button. Now this button might not be there, right? So if we click on the first one, the second, this panel doesn't have a button. So we have to somehow disable the built-in existent assertion that we use just now. It's easy to dis disable a built-in existence assertion in Cypress commands by saying should and passing a no function. So I will grab one from uh, Cypress low dash that's bundled. Okay, so this function potentially returns as a button or an empty jQuery object. So here's where the second function, which is a predicate comes in. It will get the jQuery object and it will return a true value if there is a button, okay? Now, right away, if we do this, then it will just keep clicking on the first element. We need to increment the actual counter. And that's where we can use the third parameter of options to do whatever we want. First, let's execute the actions that we want to run if there is no button. Well, in that case, we want to increment the counter so that we go to the next section. So notice now we are actually clicking the sections one by one. And we found a button in the fifth section. Now, what else can we do? We probably want to close the current section, right? So we can do the same thing and click on the current accordion before we go to the next one. Perfect. Um, there is a little bit of excessive logging going on in a command log, you know, from recurse. So what we can do, we can say log and just maybe give a message found a button. So what we don't print intermediate values and instead we just say found the button if we really find it at the end. We can also control the timeout. You know, let's give it maybe 10 seconds. And also let's give a delay of one second so that each iteration happens after one second delay. I think it looks nicer and clearer. Okay. so. We found something, but how do we click on the button? The cool thing about recurse is that it yields the result of the very last command that passed the predicate function. That means that at the end, we get the button that we found. And so we can click on it. Let's see if this works. And it clicked on the button. Now we want to observe the alert. So we have to set up the stub. We can get the window of application, get the object, and we create a stub on that object for the method alert, and we'll give it an ls alert. 
so that later we can get this alias and say should have been called once and we can pass an argument if you want to verify how it was called and let's see find the button and clicks on it and confirms that it was clicked correctly so this is how you would use cypress recurse if you don't know the precise number of panels that you have to open in order to find the button you really want to click.